Hey, what's up? It's James. And today we're going to be going over funnels inside of Go High Level because building a good website is one of the key components in this whole process here. Whether you're building that funnel for A or Z client or just yourself to bring in a new product or offer. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into it. So inside of Go High Level on the left side over here, you're going to go ahead and hit sites. And then in here, it's going to pop up this page. Now there are funnels and there are websites. There is a small difference here. A website is something a little more in depth that's going to have more functionality, maybe a shop page, a about us page. With a funnel though, your funnel is specifically designed to cause a certain action of anyone that's visiting it. For example, your funnel may be designed to have a user take a specific action such as buy your course or get a free quote. We try not to have a lot of fluff in there. We don't need about us pages. We don't need contact pages. What we're gonna be doing with a funnel is we're just going to try to draw them in just like a funnel and push them to the action that we want them to. So for example, if you're doing real estate and you're doing home quotes, then this would be perfect for you to funnel them down into actually entering in their information on your form fill. So we're gonna go ahead and hit funnel over here and go new funnel in the top right. I'll move myself here so you can see. Most of the time we're gonna be using templates, so I don't really use from blank. So we'll just go ahead and hit template. Go High Level offers a ton of great templates and they're already made for you and they have a bunch of industries in here. So let's go ahead and check that out. So for this example, we're gonna be using real estate. So we're just gonna type in real estate with the space. So this one down here is a sell real estate. We're gonna go ahead and hit the eyeball in the corner and that's gonna bring it up for us to preview to see if we really like this template. It uh, looks pretty generic. I do like the offset here. All right, I think this one for this example will do just great. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue in the top right. Now this is going, going to add this into your specific account. Now, in order to add a site, you do need to be in a sub account because this isn't gonna work in an agency view because what you should be doing is you should be creating a sub account for your specific agency. And then once you have that sub account created, then you're going to treat your own sub account just like you would a client, but it is your own agency. Okay, in here we see on the left side, we see funnel steps. So what a funnel step is, is these are the different pages inside of this funnel. So you have a landing page where the traffic is sent to, then you have your schedule page, which once somebody does the call to action on the landing page, they're gonna move over to your schedule page because this specific funnel is designed around making somebody book. So I'm gonna go ahead and just preview this so you guys can see. So here's the landing page. Everything looks pretty good on here. Every section has a clear call to action here. Then on the booking page, uh, this is where you'd connect your calendar. Obviously it says unable to connect calendar. We'll go over that in a minute. And this is just Laura Ipsum, which is Latin. These are just placeholder texts. So you are gonna have to go in and edit the text and we'll go over that next. And here's the thank you page. Thank you for your booking with a call. So this is pretty standard. You wanna make sure you have a thank you page as well and just a little buyer assurance as once you sell something or get a booking, you want to let them know that, hey, we're taking care of everything on the back end. We'll be in touch with you shortly. So let's go ahead and dive into the actual editing of this because there isn't really too much more to see here. If you do wanna do a split test, you can go ahead and do a split test and you can create a variation of this specific landing page. Let's say you wanted to try a different color tone, for example, you can go ahead and change the color tone of this, put it over here, and then you can send the traffic half over here and half over here. It's what a split test is called. You do this for A-B testing to see if one works better than the original. That way you're not throwing out the baby with the bathwater when you create or update your website. A-B testing on funnels is good if you're running paid ads, but for what we're doing, we don't need to worry about that. Let's go over to products. You can add a product here, just hit add product. And depending on if you've made a product, let's say you have a course or something, you can go ahead and add your product in here and it will pull up what your course is and your product. Now this ties in over to the left side under memberships where you would be creating a product. For publishing, if we want to change the step URL, so after it'll be you know myrealestate.com for landing page, if we want to change this instead of landing page, we just put LLP1 one and then we just go update step that will change the forward link here the step url you can go over to settings over here and this is where you'd set up your domain depending on what domain you want to attach to this specific funnel uh, you can go ahead and click that here and here's the path you can change your path as well a favicon is the tiny little icon in the top left for example when we go to notion 
do you see this tiny little box right here? I'll zoom in for you guys. But this is called a favicon, and all you really have to do to get a favicon is you just input the URL for the favicon. This is body tracking code. If you're running any type of ads, you're gonna definitely want to put your code in here. It would be your pixel code for Facebook or TikTok, whatever marketing services you're using, Google Analytics, anything like that, you wanna put it over here. Okay, let's go into the actual funnel here. So uh, we're gonna edit the landing page section. So we're just gonna go down here and we're gonna click edit. Okay, now that we're inside of the funnel builder here, I'm just gonna go over a few basic sections and kind of walk you through exactly how this all works. So up here you have, as you can see, this is green. When you click into a section, it's gonna open it on the right side. So it says section over there. If I were to click over here, it's gonna open up the navigation menu. If I click here, it's gonna open up the button. So each thing that you click has its own set of variables and settings over on the right side. Depending on what we wanna edit, we're gonna go ahead and click into that. Now, as you can see that in this whole section, this green section, it's housing a bunch of different elements. So here's a column, a navigation menu, a button, a image, and you see at the very bottom here that it's showing image, second column. So let's just scroll down a little bit. And right here, we're just gonna click this green button in the middle and it says add section. We're gonna create a full width section. So now you see I have a new section right here. Now inside of this section, we're gonna go ahead and hit add row. And it, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few columns inside here. So we're gonna go ahead and add six columns. Now we have six columns inside of the row inside of the section. So now inside of the first column over here, we're gonna add an element and the element we're gonna add is a headline. So we're just gonna hit headline. Now this, this headline is something that we're gonna be using quite a bit. I add another element over here. You can add a button over here. You can add a paragraph. You can add a bullet list. You can add a image. And for the image, you just click here. It'll say image options on the right. And we're gonna go ahead and click image. Now upload for media library. And then up here in, in the top right, it's gonna say my media. And we're gonna go ahead and click that and then scroll down to unsplash. Now in unsplash, we can just type in whatever we want. Let's go ahead and type in a mansion. So now you get a ton of mansions and we're gonna go ahead and this one looks really trendy and cool. Go ahead and double click that and it's gonna bring it up here. Now, as you can see, it's very small right now. So let's say we want to move it next to this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click this button right here and we can drag it right on top of another section. So now this section looks a little better and we hope you level up your skill. But now you see how this text is kind of cut off at the top. So that is what's called padding down here on the right side. So we're gonna click into this text box, which is a headline, as you can see here. Then at the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and click this margin and we're gonna change it to 80. Okay, see that, that helps now. So we want that at 80. That looks a lot better now. That's great. So let's go back up to our six sections here. We're gonna add another element. I'm obviously just showing you all this just so you can mess with it. It's not very good looking by any means. So if you ever wanna just delete one of the sections, boop, you can just go ahead and hit that delete the trash can up at the top right. Hit the trash can, hit the trash can. You can name this image for the element name if you'd like. And if you'd like to go over to the advanced section, here you can see the visibility. There's visibility on desktop and there's visibility on mobile. So if we click, we unclick the mobile, then what that's gonna do is it's gonna take that image away. We don't see it anymore. But if we go back to desktop, it will be there. Let's go back and put it on mobile. Everything you're gonna be doing is gonna need to be both mobile and desktop because you want to cater to your whole audience. Now, there are some cool things that you can do with buttons. So let's go ahead and just add a button and it says click here to sign up. So we click the button and now this button pops over on the right. It's under button. We can do letter spacing depending on how big or wide we want the letters. I think that looks pretty good. You can change the font size here. Obviously we don't want it too big but I think a medium size would be good. Okay, I don't like to add subtext into the button because I'd like it to be very clear and concise of what this button's doing. Now, if you go over to themes, you can go ahead and scroll through a ton of different styles of button to kind of get the look that you're going for. 
you know, so you can also go into general and you can change the color. Here's the background color of the button. So we can change it to green, we can change it to red, we can change it to black. Let's go ahead and keep this teal color that the rest of the website is on. What we're gonna do with the button next is we're gonna make sure that it goes to the right location. So for this specific button, we're gonna to wanna to make sure it does the right thing. Now, if, any, if at any point you delete something you didn't wanna delete, just go up to the top right and there's gonna be an undo button. We're gonna go ahead and just hit that right there. Let's move this. Now you see here, can we move this whole section? Now that we stack these on top of each other, you see this purple one. You can hit the down arrow and up arrow and it will move the location of the element inside of the section. Perfect, now let's say this doesn't really line up, so let's just go ahead and click inside this box and we're just gonna text align to the center. Now I don't like that this is, this has a check mark here. You can also just hit Control Z to go back. All right, perfect. So inside of this button, let's scroll down to the bottom right and button actions. What this button is gonna do is we're gonna have it open pop-up. Now another, we're gonna have it to open pop-up and then at the top left up here, it's gonna say pop-up settings. We're gonna click pop-up settings. And this is the pop-up that's gonna pop up. Now you can either upload your own survey here or form fill, or you just go ahead and build it out. Now we can just go into elements and then go into form. Let's go ahead and add two columns, add element form, select your form. Let's just go opt in and let's go ahead and delete this other one. So here's full name, email, phone optional, and we can change the call to action on that button if you would like. So now that this pops up, let's say we want one more thing at the bottom, just a sub headline. We're gonna drag that here. We're gonna change the padding on this. You see how that padding is a little crazy? Let's go ahead and move that. Perfect. You can also click into this and make the margin less as well. See how that just brought everything up. Now, we obviously want to add a, something at the top, giving a, let's go headline. And then here, we're just gonna drag, oops. We're just gonna go ahead and click that button. Go ahead and drag it up to the top. All right, perfect. So now that we have this all done, it looks great. And we're just gonna go ahead and exit out of that. Every once in a while, I like to go up here and just hit save. That way, uh, if your computer crashes, at least it's saved. All right, so like I said, this is a pretty simple way to do this. Most of these are gonna go to the next step because in a funnel, you want everything to funnel to the next step. That's the next logical path for it to go. I hate this image. Let's just change it right now. Go to upload media library, go to my library, unsplash, just double click that, boom. And let's say we wanted to change the size of this. Here's your pixel width and pixel height. Now we can go ahead and hit preview and this is what it's gonna look like. Perfect. Now, as you can see, we left some stuff here. Let's just go ahead and fix that. Now, there's also a cool function where if you try to exit this page, we have something called an exit pop-up. So as my cursor goes above to type or to get out or to close it, our exit pop-up pops up and says, hey, I have this thing. And you can have that say whatever you'd like. Hey, 10% discount. Because if somebody's on your funnel, you definitely want to capture them before they leave. So you want to throw whatever offer you can at them right before they leave to make sure that they purchase from you. Give them the best chance and the best deal. This was just the playground that we had a little fun in. Let's go ahead and delete that. All right, perfect. And the exit pop-up looks great. These are required. This phone number is optional, which you can change the settings inside of your pop-up settings. Now the forms need to be built in the form builder. So that's in a different section at the very beginning and you can go ahead and change them there. Another great thing we can do is add a video inside of here. So let's say on the next page, we wanna go ahead and add a VSL, which is a video sales letter. So let's go to the schedule page here. All right, now let, like I mentioned, we're gonna just go ahead right here and add a button, one column, add element, video. Now the video pops up here. Now we click into the video element, scroll down on the right side, and it's gonna say video type. And we're gonna go ahead, you can do YouTube, Vimeo, and a few others here. Video with a private listing is probably the easiest in my experience. And then you go ahead and you just type in the video URL right there. If you click this autoplay button, it'll just go ahead and autoplay. Due to browser restrictions, autoplay video will be muted by default. 
and controls. You can opt to have the controls there or not for the person viewing it. Sometimes you can lock them out of the controls if you wanna make sure that the whole thing plays, or you can give them the controls to unmute it, etc. But You can choose if you want it three fourths width, half width, or a full width. I definitely love having videos on websites because it keeps people engaged. It's a great way to get your message across in a long form format. It's a great tool to help with conversions as well. So let's go over the next thing that we can add. Click the plus button inside of this element and we're gonna go ahead and put a countdown timer and we're gonna go ahead and click this up arrow on the left and that's gonna move it to the top, all right? And inside of here, we're gonna go ahead and make that a little bigger. We want giant font size. Perfect. You can add code. This is for custom JavaScript. If you want to add that in here, I don't really mess with that. Everything's already pre-built. You can add a minute timer instead of a clock at the top. So the timer, as you can see, it will be counting down. You can add a map. And then in here, I believe you can search inside the search box and enter location, Georgia. Change it to satellite. Now, if you wanna add your social icons, you can go ahead and click those. And then inside of here, you can have these each link to whatever your YouTube channel is. Here's your YouTube channel, forward slash James Loros. Boom, and that will update and put it there so when somebody clicks it, you can go in, add your TikTok, etc. This one's pretty great to have on your website, so make sure you add that one. Now, if you want like a navigation menu, where at the bottom header or footer, you can have a home, about, contact, and then inside of here on the right side, it's gonna show you home, where you hit this little pencil icon on the right, and it's gonna say, where do you wanna go? Let's go to a certain step, and that step would be the schedule page. And then you would hit submit, and we can title this, uh, you know, uh, schedule. So schedule goes to schedule page, boom. And then when somebody clicks that, it brings them right there. You can change the font size over here to make it bigger. Perfect. Now there's also a progress bar. These are pretty cool. These are great if you have like a slideshow. You can have it at a certain progress. So this says progressing. If you go to themes, you can have different. I like the one that moves. There you go. And the percent that it's progressed. So let's say, you know, we want them to know that they're at like 80% or so. Or oh, you're almost there, you know, 90%. So that's actually really cool. Let's go ahead and move that. Nice. This really helps if you're showing different slides or you have multiple menus that you need somebody to get through, such as a survey. There's a two-step order form, a one-step order form, and a order confirmation. So depending which one you guys are gonna be doing, let's go ahead and click two-step two order form. Inside two-step order form, company name, full name. If you're selling some type of product, you want to link this, obviously. This only really works if you're selling a product. So the one-step order form is just on one single page. As you can see, the difference between the two-step is here, and then you have to go to step two, and then the one-step has everything with the product name applied already here. 